My name is Maria Alejandra. Today I'm going to talk about lipidemia. I hope you enjoy it. Lipidemia is characterized as a scientific term for the presence of asepsic lipids and lipoproteins in the blood of a person. There are some synonyms as hyperlipidemia, lipidemia, and lipidemia. Lipids are transported in a protein capsule. These fats are responsible for causing high blood pressure. Cardiovascular complications can take place as a result of the presence of these lipids. Hyperlipidemias are divided into primary and secondary subtypes. Primary, primary hyperlipidemia is usually due to genetic, genetic causes such as mutation in a receptor protein, while secondary hyperlipidemia arises due to other underlying causes such as diabetes. Hyperlipidemias are also classified according to which types of lipids are elevated. That is hypercholesterolemia, hypertriglyceridemia, or both in combined hyperlipidemia. Elevated levels of lipoprotein may also be classified as a form of hyperlipidemia. Cholesterol is a type of lipid, an essential element contained in all human cells. However, Excess lipids and other fatty substances in the blood can cause hyperlipidemia and other lipid disorders. Hyperlipidemia is a significant risk factor for development of atherosclerosis and heart disease. The cardiovascular system comprises the heart, blood vessels, and blood. Blood has many life-sustaining responsibilities, including transporting oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, and hormones throughout the body. Blood contains red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and nutrients. Cholesterol also circulates in the bloodstream. Two common forms of cholesterol are LDL, known as the bad cholesterol, and HDL, known as the good cholesterol. Hyperlipidemia is the term used when the blood contains a higher amount of LDL than is recommended. Cholesterol and other fatty substances combine in the bloodstream and are deposited in the blood vessels to form a material called plaque. The increase in lipids can cause plaques to grow over time, leading to obstructions in blood flow. If an obstruction occurs in the coronary arteries, it could result in a heart attack. And if an obstruction occurs in the arteries of the brain, it could lead to stroke. Causes of hyperlipidemia can include heredity. And However, the greatest modifiable risk factor is diet. A poor diet is one with a fat intake greater than 40% of total calories, saturated fat intake greater than 10% of total calories, and cholesterol intake greater than 300 milligrams per day. There are no symptoms of hyperlipidemia, so regular cholesterol screening with blood tests should be part of the physical examination. A doctor or healthcare professional can recommend ways to prevent hyperlipidemia. Now I pause a bit. Our bodies make and use certain amount, a certain amount of cholesterol every day, but sometimes that seems to get out of work either through genetics or diet. Higher levels of the good HDL cholesterol are associated with decreased risk of heart disease and stroke. HDL helps by removing cholesterol from our, your arteries, which slows the development of plaque. The bad LDL cholesterol, on the other hand, can lead to blockage. Uh, if there is too much in the body, hyperlipidemia can be reversible in many cases 
through healthy eating and regular exercise. Diabetes causes increased levels of fatty acids in the circulation. Those are the liver cells and the insulin receptors, the blood vessel and the red blood cells and glucose fatty acids. High levels of fatty acids are converted by the liver into lipids such as triglycerides and cholesterol. That's a lipid. High levels of triglycerides and cholesterol are called hyperlipidemia. That's heart tissue, the coronary blood vessel. That's a plaque which is like the combination of lipids. Hyperlipidemia increases the risk of plaque formation and atherosclerosis. Which turns in the screen of this increase of the risk of a stroke. Lipidemia can be reduced by limiting your intake of red meat and dairy products made with whole milk to reduce your saturated and trans fat. A diet high in fiber can help lower cholesterol levels by as much as 10%. Lose a straight weight. A weight loss of 10% can go a long way to lowering your risk of or reversing hyperlipidemia. Lipid levels can speed up a process called arteriosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. What is hyperlipidemia? What you don't know could harm you. You may have heard the term, but what is hyperlipidemia and why is it harmful to your health? These are the questions you will find answers to in this article. The truth is what you don't know could be hurting your heart health. Definition of hyperlipidemia Your doctor would tell you hyperlipidemia is an excess of fatty substances called lipids, largely cholesterol and triglycerides, in the blood. But the simple definition of hyperlipidemia is too much fat in your blood. It is normal to have some fat in your blood. In fact, Fats are routinely carried through your blood and have many benefits when present at acceptable levels. Problems arise when levels are too high. Hyperlipidemia, the connection to heart disease. The main concern with hyperlipidemia is that it can increase your risk of atherosclerosis, commonly referred to as hardening of the arteries. When you are young your arteries are smooth and supple but as you age you begin to accumulate plaque on the inner walls of your arteries. Plaque is made up of substances like fat that circulate in your blood so the more fat you have the more plaque builds. Eventually, if not treated the arteries become blocked and this increases your risk of heart disease or stroke. Hyperlipidemia the causes that add up. Both lifestyle choices and medical conditions can cause hyperlipidemia. For instance, 
Your risk increases if you are obese. Do not exercise regularly and you smoke. Medical conditions also increase your risk and these include diabetes, underactive thyroid, kidney disease, and pregnancy. Hyperlipidemia can also be inherited from your family. The main state of treatment for hyperlipidemia is a dietary and lifestyle modification followed by drug therapy as necessary. Some causes of hyperlipidemia, everything certain diseases like they better taking certain medications and a poor diet. <laughs> hyperlipidemia has no symptoms. It's not, if not treated properly, hyperlipidemia can lead to atherosclerosis and heart disease. If you have hyperlipidemia, commonly known as high cholesterol, you have high levels of lipids in your blood. Testing lipoprotein profile. It measures your levels of total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. During this test, a blood sample will be taken from your arm or finger after you have not eaten for 9 to 12 hours. The total cholesterol goal should be less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. For most people, an ideal HDL or good cholesterol should be 60 or higher. An ideal LDL or bad cholesterol should be less than 100 and fasting triglycerides should be less than 150. Your specific goals may vary depending on your health situation. Ask your doctor what your lipid goals should be. If your cholesterol levels are too high, it's important to eat a heart-healthy diet with lean sources of protein and plenty of fruits and vegetables. Also, the types of fats you eat can affect your cholesterol level. For example, saturated fats and trans fats tend to raise LDL cholesterol in your blood. These fats are usually solid at room temperature and are found in meat and dairy products, many processed foods, and tropical oils such as coconut oil, palm oil, and cocoa butter. Unsaturated fats, including polyunsaturated and <coughs> monounsaturated fats, are healthier fats that are usually more liquid at room temperature. They are found in foods such as fish, nuts, and vegetable oils. Other lifestyle decisions you can make to help your cholesterol are not smoking and getting regular exercise, such as brisk walking or running. If lifestyle changes can't reduce your cholesterol levels enough, your doctor may prescribe certain medications to reduce it. Statins are drugs that reduce the amount of cholesterol made in your liver. They affect LDL levels more than HDL or triglyceride levels. Niacin reduces LDL cholesterol and triglycerides and increases HDL cholesterol made in your liver. Bile acid binding resins are drugs that prevent the reuse of bile after helping to digest your food. As a result, your liver uses more cholesterol to replace the lost bile, which means less cholesterol in your bloodstream. Fibrates are mainly used to reduce triglyceride levels in your blood, but they can also raise HDL levels. 